So in this lecture, we'll talk about a little bit of an overview on computers and what it means to actually uh, do some programming. So if we think about what a computer is for a second, uh, the computer is, simply enough, just this electronic device that all it does is it interacts with the user. So say, for example, uh, I type on my keyboard. I, I swipe my credit card at the self-checkout line. I talk into my phone. Those are all inputs. And what the computer does is it then in turn kind of processes that input, that information, and it does its math. Then it decides whether or not it wants to output that information to us, the user, so that we can see it, or just store that for later use. That's all a computer does. So everything almost has a computer in it nowadays. Your computers, your, your phones. Uh, you can now have little watches that are basically tiny little computers. Computers are becoming more predominant as we move forward in life. And so it's almost really good to actually kind of take a second and understand what are we doing with that computer. So let's just take a moment and let's think about this guy right here. This is an Arduino Uno. It's just a tiny microcomputer that pretty much just gets a program, accepts some input, and processes it, does something. Now, all I have it doing is turning on this LED, this light emitting diode. Now. What happens when I give this power? Well, by giving it power, you see that I actually have it set up so that in every 10 seconds, our LED comes on and goes off. And then 10 more seconds, that light will come back on. There we are. So, that's its entire job, is just to focus in on turning on and off. We'll actually be doing uh, very similar programs. While we won't be uh, working specifically with an Arduino in that case, the idea will still be there. So again, when we start to think about the computer as a whole, we have tons of computers that we work with. We've got desktops, laptops, and now we're even moving into handheld computers such as tablets and smartphones where we have a computer always by our side. For example, how many of you guys are already looking at your phone while you're listening to this video? Stop it. We also have standalone computers, those self-checkout lines, uh, uh, self lines I was talking about, uh, kiosks, ATMs. We even are now moving into wearable technology. Uh, like I said, we have smartwatches that we can put on. Uh, Under Armour, for example, now has a compression shirt uh, rash guard, if you will, that you can put on, and there's a little kind of thing you put right there on the chest that just monitors your breathing and your heart rate. It's wearable technology, and it's going to continue to grow as we just progress as a society. Uh, you know. My thought is that in the next five years, we're going to have fully functioning LCD or whatever the uh, technology will be, but fully functioning LCD style t-shirts that, you know, have a graphic on there and that will be an advertisement. Uh, you're a walking billboard now. Uh, don't steal that idea. That's mine. I will plan on building it. And I know you can't see it's kind of behind me, but we also have supercomputers. Uh, say, for example, really the world if we think about it you know the world isn't run on just a single desktop it's not run on a, a Google Glass wearable computer it's built on these massive powerful machines like IBM's Watson or Apple's Siri what those programs those applications those computers do is they basically process information very complicated mathematical equations in lightning fast kind of properties. Every single one of those, however, have some form of an operating system on there. Even this guy, even that Arduino Uno that I showed you earlier, this guy 
still has some operating system in it. It's very tiny, it's very simplistic. All it was is designing it to turn on and off a red light. However, when we start to look at more advanced programs or advanced computers, uh, that's where we get into operating systems like Windows or the OS X. Uh, I believe Yosemite is the most up-to-date one. Or we have the iOS, Android, and your various Linux distros. So everything runs on these operating systems. Well, what is an operating system? All an operating system really is, is it's a program. It's a program designed to have programs running on top of it, allowing us to have something called multitasking. The entire concept of Windows, the reason it is called Windows, is so I can have multiple Windows going on at any given time. That's why I'm able to have this screen going on while my web camera is going on, while a PowerPoint presentation is running on in the background. That's multitasking. So when we start to look at the uh, computer, we have two separate portions of it, hardware and software. Now, if this is your first programming class, and you've probably, uh, you know, eventually you have to take a programming class. If this is your first one, you're probably more familiar with hardware. You've probably become that computer person at home. And you may not even, but you're at least more inclined to kind of dig under the hood. You're not so scared if I show you something like an entire motherboard, for example. That doesn't frighten you as terribly much. That's hardware. We don't actually spend a lot of time in hardware with programming. In fact, we're actually on the software side of things. And software is this, the slides say, intangible concept. What it really means is what we do as computer programmers is design how to talk to a computer. You know, if we look at this again, this Arduino, all it was designed to do was turn on a red light. Well, how do I as a computer programmer, how do I tell this to do that? Well, that's where we get into programming languages. And programming languages allow us to make this adjustment. I'll just skip ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. Those programming languages allow us to uh, write human language, uh, human language so that it can then go through what is known as a compiler or an interpreter uh, for different languages and it translates that into what is known as machine code ones and zeros binary because that's all the computer understands it only understands uh, an electrical signal so when we get a bunch of electrical signals together we can represent things like numbers text data that's where the programming languages come into play Something to take note of, you know, you probably, again, if this is your first language, I know for uh, a lot of you, you know, you're forced to take this one, but why did you go with Java versus Python versus JavaScript versus uh, COBOL? You know, there's tons of programming languages out there. Well, for at least the basics, they're all the same. You know, think about them as just a different language, French, German, uh, English. We all are we all have some way to say where is the bathroom you know where is the bathroom i don't really know how it's spoken in uh french but in spanish for example it is donde esta el baño the entire syntax is different the words i used was different but the concept was still the same the same thing actually happens in programming languages is that while I might have to say things differently. So say, for example, I wanted to represent the number five. Uh, I might represent that one way in JavaScript versus Java versus Python, but the concept of having a five is still there. So we'll continue going on. And if I skip back a few, so all of these fives and you know whatnot, what happens is we get data. We get this uh, storage of information onto the computer. And we refer to this as binary. 
ones and zeros. That's where they come in. And if we collect a bunch of those ones and zeros together, we get a byte. Eight of those bits become a byte. And we continue to expand on this idea. Well, what is a byte? Well, if I take this guy right here, you might have seen one of these if you've ever dug onto your computer, but this is a processor. This guy, if we take a very close look, you can pause the video now and count. There you are. This has 64 pins on the back of it. This has 64 pins because each pin allows me to have another electronic signal. Now those electronic signals, what those do is well, they allow me to represent uh, 2 to the 64 bits uh, of information just in one cycle, one computational cycle. That's a big number, 2 to the 64. You know, so much so, pull up the calculator, if you will. I go 2 to the power of 64. 2 to the power of 64, that's a big number. You know, I can represent so many things with that. I can represent numbers, I can represent text, I can represent sound, graphics. I can do a lot with 64 bits of uh, combinations. Well, that's actually where we go with this. So we think about this, think about it with that LED again, that little LED light. I only had one. But how many possible states do I have with that? How many possible things can one LED light have? Well, it can be off. Well, if we think of that as off, we can think of that as it has no electricity. We can consider that the zero in our binary. Well, what happens when it's on? When it's on, it now has power. It has electricity. Again, to the computer, that's what it wants. It wants those five volts. To us, as the human, we think about that as one. All right, so we had one LED. What happens if I add in two? Well, the same concept goes on there. Now, all of a sudden, both of these LED lights, they're off. So I have zero, zero. But I can also have one of them being on, one of them being off, so zero, one or I can have the opposite. I can actually flip those around. So now the one on the left is on and the one on the right is off. Well, again, now it's one zero. So I've already got three states and I only have one more that I can do, which is what happens if they're both on. So what happens is I now have four states. What I actually have is two to the second power two to the number of possible combinations, possible states. So what happens if I have, say for example, if we think about a string of binary digits, a byte, what that brings us to is 256 possible states. We're able to represent a number from zero to 256 in one byte as we continue to expand on our computers and our files, that's what allows us to work and build. So we start to uh, create different types of data, integers, strings, characters, all from these ones and zeros.